Hello everyone and welcome back to the next video on the Black Pearl. Um, it's it's going to be a tiny different video, a bit of more discussion and hopefully I will go through a an adaptation of my technique of weathering. I hope you all enjoyed the video. Leave a like, leave a comment. Please consider subscribing. As usual, I'm starting by staining the wood with a dark stain. This is walnut stain, I believe. Now, usually after staining the wood, you see me applying matte varnish. The idea of the matte varnish is to seal the wood so that it doesn't absorb too much of the chipping fluid and then I do the chipping fluid. In this case, we are not chipping and considering the work that I plan to do on top of the paint, I decided that the matte varnish does not seal the wood enough. This product is called Plasticator. It's from Amo from Mig Jimenez. Uh, it's Plasticator Thin. Uh, there's Plasticator Thick. Honestly, I never used it. Uh, if it's thicker than this, then it's going to be too thick for sure. This is already a bit of a sticky, pro uh, thick product. Uh, I apply it with a brush and I sp I'm careful to spread it evenly across all the surfaces and this will completely seal the wood. This is a product that is designed to make any surface act as if you're painting on plastic after it's applied and it has dried. It will completely seal the wood and I will have an experience much closer to painting on plastic for everything that I'm going to do on top of this. Now the plasticator is dried, as you can see it dries with a gloss finish, it doesn't really matter. I start painting with the German grey that I've been using on the black pearl, just normal airbrushing until I get full coverage. Now the paint is dry, I'm going to apply a generous coat of chipping fluid. This is the start of the step that is the reason why I use the plasticator. I'm going to apply dust effect and I'm going to chip the layer of dust effect. That's why I'm applying chipping fluid on top of the paint, not to chip the paint, but to chip the, the, dust, the dust effect. Uh, I have tested this and while using only the matte varnish as I usually do to seal the wood, it's a lot harder to, to chip the chipping effect because everything gets ingrained a bit more on the wood and because of the wood texture and so on, it's 
a bit harder to, to work. And if it's a bit harder, it's a bit harder to control. Uh, using the plasticator, nothing on top of the plasticator gets absorbed by the wood, and it really is exactly as working on top of plastic, and everything gets easier from there on. Now, this is Rain Marks from Malejo, and I'm going to airbrush a bit in not a full coat, a bit more on some spots, a bit less on the other spots. And then I will, as usual, use a brush and water to remove part doing chipping effects on this layer of watermarks to create an idea of dirt. Uh, the next thing that I want to address is I wanted to have a clear difference between under the waterline and above the waterline. But this, the ship is all grey, so the, I decided that I will do that by weathering quite differently under the under and above to create that watermark difference, waterline on the waterline by having two different approaches. For example, I'm using, as I said, this from the Lejo, the rain marks. And above, I will use from AK dust effects, and it's lighter, it will create a difference. And then I will have some weathering with oils that will also be different. The other thing that I can already start addressing is this ship is has very little ship under the, the waterline. It's very flat bottom, it's the, the widest part of the ship is quite low. So when this is put in display, you see very little of this part that I'm weathering now. That's why I exaggerated a lot on the weathering, as you will see, because not much of it is visible. So I needed to bring it up a bit to create that difference between what's under the waterline and what's above the waterline. So watching it now, it might seem exaggerated. It is intended to create the proper effect once the ship is on its display position. Now I'm applying a coat of matte varnish or super matte. It doesn't really matter. It needs to be matte only. The main goal of this coat is to protect the work that has been done and prevent the next steps from reactivating the chipping effect, losing some of the, the rain marks, the rain marks effects that are on the ship. So this will just secure all in place and make sure that not what's coming next won't affect it. Now it starts the part that I mentioned that it seems exaggerated. Uh, 
this is intended. Uh, as I said, I want a clear difference and this is not that much visible. I'm using oils, uh, using some oil brushes. This one on the shot is actually rust. I'm using a gray one, I'm using a brown, a light brown one, a beige if you want. I also use a tiny bit of green. Then with the brush uh, moist with white spirits, I blend everything together, always doing a vertical, a vertical motion to make it look like that it's from water running down this. Or when I think I have too much, I go with the brush and I remove some parts to, cre <clears throat> to create a bit more streaks. And basically that's it. I do it all across the ship to create this effect. As I said, seems exaggerated. It will end up working well, at least in my opinion, and resulting exactly as I want. This is where I will end today's video. On the next one, I will address the how I weathered the, the ship above the waterline. It will be quite different from this, and you will be able to see the contrast between one and the other. Leave a like, leave a comment, please consider subscribing. I hope to catch you all in the next one.